All right, so now back to our second installment here. After what we've talked about so far and some of the examples that the professor uh, uh, showed you, um, I just want to give you a, a real simple one to consider in terms of the difference between having a binding contract and, and not having one. Suppose that I'm about to go on vacation and my friend knows this, and so he offers to mow my lawn. He says, you know, I want you to have a really good time on vacation and I want you to come back. And, you know, you've done me a lot of favors in my, uh, in the past, so I want you to come back to a really nice manicured lawn. And I say nothing else except other than, um, okay, that, that sounds great. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And then when I come back, um, he actually hasn't mowed the lawn and it's full of weeds and I would have had somebody else do it. My landscaper, you know, maybe I gave him the weekend off, but the point is it's not at all what I expected. Now, you know, so I'm upset at uh, my friend who promised to do this and now has not. So think about that situation and then consider a similar situation where the same thing happens except that in this case my friend says, um, you know, I want you to come back to a nice house and you've always been a good friend to me and normally I charge $40 to, to mow lawns of this size. But... Uh, because I like you and because you're my friend, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i do it for you while you're gone uh, on Saturday. I'll do it for uh, $20. And so you say, okay, that sounds good. Um, you know, sounds like a deal. And the same thing happens when you come back. It's, uh, your yard's a mess. It hasn't been done. And you've got, you know, you were ready to pay the person for the work that you expected to be done. And now it's not done. So now you have to, you know, you have to hire somebody else. It's going to be a little bit longer before you get your lawn mowed. And you could think of a, one or two more uh, in, uh, aggravations that come from that situation. Now, in which of those situations would you feel that the person who uh, has come back home to a messy lawn, in which situation would you feel that he was more entitled to be, uh, to have, society or the justice system make uh, hold that guy accountable who said he would mow your lawn. The situation where he said, I would do it uh, for free uh, because I like you, because you're my friend. Or the situation where they he said, I'll do it for a discount, but um, uh, I'll do it for a discount. I'll do it for half of what I normally do. And, and then didn't do it after he had promised that he would do it for a certain price as opposed to just doing it for free. Who in that situation do you think really has um, more to complain about? Um, and that's sort of kind of what we're asking when we're talking about, uh, you know, whether, whether somebody should be legally bound to a contractual obligation. You know, when would it be unfair or unreasonable to let them get away with not going through with their uh, stipulated um, uh, intentions. And so I, you should think about those two things because in each situation there may be a remedy, but in one there's not a breach of contract remedy. There may be a different type of remedy that we'll talk about after we talk about the foundations of contract formation. Let me just open up the... Uh, slide here again. And here we have basically what a contract is again. It can be um, expressed or implied, but it's an agreement again, supported by sufficient consideration. And the difference between these situations that I'm describing and that the other, uh, the professor was describing is what really consideration is, what the parties are actually doing for one another versus what they're not doing for one another, whether they're just sort of offering something, you know, because, you know, if they feel like doing it versus when somebody is actually binding themselves to be uh, contractually obligated 
So first, uh, I want you to know that the elements of, to make a contract um, are essentially, there's basically three parts. And you could complicate it a little bit more than this. But what I want you to know is that there's basically three parts to making a contract. There's the offer, there's the acceptance of the offer, and then there's consideration. Um, the offer is simply when one party promises to do uh, something or to refrain from doing something if you meet their conditions. All right? So I'll sell you my car. I don't have to do that otherwise. It's something I'm promising to do. Um, if you will meet whatever my conditions are, it could be Maybe I want uh, you to trade me for your motorcycle. It could be that I want um, a certain amount of money. But I'm making clear in the offer that I'm going to give up something that I, I don't otherwise have to do in exchange for you meeting certain requirements of mine. Uh, because there's something that you have that I can benefit from and vice versa. Okay, It has to be clearly communicated that that the intent anyways that uh, you want to be contractually bound it can't just be something that's uh, expressing uh, sort of a hope that maybe you guys can come to an agreement later like for instance saying boy I'd like to sell my car uh, you know if I could find the right buyer that's not exactly an offer to you to sell the car under specific conditions, right? And the basic terms and conditions of the offer have to be clear at the beginning um, so that the other party knows exactly and that we know exactly uh, that the other parties, well, what they were agreeing to and also um, that they were in fact agreeing, uh, that they knew what they were agreeing to such that there was a, a meeting of the minds um, and a mutual shared uh, set of obligations. And of course, the offer has to be properly communicated. If you have some, you know, intent to, um, to you know, offer somebody a certain, I mean, or to make a certain offer, it, if you communicate it to my friend Joe, then I can't be expected to know of the offer and to properly accept it. 